Welcome to another History Wanderer video. And in this video we're going to be looking at the inventions which Rome was famous for. And go through them one at a time and give a brief rundown of when they was developed or when the first examples of them being used is. I'm not going to go into too much depth on each item. I'll probably do a history of these items one at a time going through the earliest usage through to modern day usage but for now I'm just going to try and quickly run through and go through the earliest dates that it's known that these were used so the first thing I'm going to start on was the Roman style of civilian dress which um, was copied directly from the Etruscans which was modern day Tuscana uh, they're still not too sure whether it was an indigenous people who took on ideas from the east or whether it was eastern settlers um, it's more likely there was indigenous with um, a few people coming in from the east to showing them how they can use technology better but anyway I'm strain a little bit so the style of dress the Romans used both male and female was direct copies from the 7th century BC uh, Etruscan uh, style of clothing right down and including the famous Roman toga which was a direct copy of the Etruscan tabana which basically was a tunic belted at the waist and a cloak thrown over one shoulder now Monty Python famously said what have the Romans ever given us and the first answer they give was the aqueduct. The earliest known example of an aqueduct has been found on Minoan Crete which was built in around about 2000 BC which is well over 1500 years before Rome was built. There has been examples found in Mesopotamia which is between the Tigris and the Euphrates River in what is more commonly known as the, as the Fertile Crescent and it was from that area where civilization and city-state building reared its head Rome itself is built only because of the Cloaca Maxima which is now called the Great Sewer but what that did was it dried out the marshes of which Rome is now built on. If the Cloaca Maxima hadn't have been started in 602 BC, things such as the Flavian Amphitheatre, please don't call it the Colosseum, the, the Forum and the Palaces of Nero and the Circus Maximus, these were all built on the land which was drained by the construction of the Cloaca Maxima and this as I say was built in 602 BC and the marshes were drained out fully by 575 BC which nails the foundation of Rome to 575 BC because that was when they could first level the land and build the first forum there may have been a few scattered villages on the seven hills, or sorry, six hills of Rome. The Palatine Hill wasn't, um, no signs of habitation on that hill until uh, Rome itself was founded. But a few villages don't a city make, and I will be doing a more in depth video on the founding of Rome and looking at Romulus and Remus and the first four kings of Rome before uh, the Etruscans turned up but I, I don't want to get sidetracked too much on this now now we know that um, the Phoenicians were using a type of um, system system of which they caught rainwater and then they piped it to the houses to a more localised form of aqueducts but that was primarily used for hygiene purposes. The cisterns were connected to a room when you come into the property. And there was a chamber at the side of the front door of which there was a bath. 
of which you come out of the street, you'd have a bath, you change your clothes, and then you go into the property, so as you're not taking the dirt and fell from the street into the actual place of residence, which, when you think about it, makes a lot more sense than the modern day way, which is we have baths and bathrooms upstairs in houses tucked away, so you've got to go all the way through the house. So when you're walking through the front door, you've got to walk all the way through the property, then you get changed, then you have a bath. And it just seems more logical that they put the bath next to the front door. So when you came in through the front door, you cleaned yourself, then you went into the house, keeping the dirt out, so as you didn't have to clean your house as much. But anyway, that was a, um, a Phoenician, and they've actually found exhibits in North Africa of uh, Phoenician buildings and Carthaginian buildings where that was the standard way of doing it. And that's before you even get close to the famous Roman baths. These were built well well over 500 BC. And in fact, the earliest known example of a bath was found from approximately 3,300 BC in the Indus Valley, of which is in modern-day Pakistan. Now... People say about the, the hypercourse that the Romans used, they basically put the floor on stilts and uh, blew warm earth through the property to keep them warm. Where even the name of that, the hypercost, betrays its Greek origin. The earliest known example of it was at the, the Temple of Ephesus. And even the word is Greek. The Greek two words of hyper, meaning beneath, and caustic, meaning burnt. So that's what you've got, the hypercost literally translates as underground burning. So that betrays its Greek origin. The famous Pax Romana, or Roman law, that was just a variation of laws that have been going on since Hammurabi in Babylonia, all the way through to the ancient Egyptians. They had in-depth well-regarded laws of which were referred to if there was ever a uh, dispute. You also had the places like um, the Temple or the Palace of Solomon on which one despotic leader would listen to the uh, claims of two sides and then judge on one side or the other. But the idea of a written set of laws comes from Hammurabi of which we still use the, ex the expression an eye for an eye as um, a way of getting justice and that itself is from the laws of Hammurabi which was from Babylon which again is circa 3000 BC then we've got mass agriculture Rome is famous, I mean even Gladiator has Russell Crowe walking through swathes of um, crop putting his hand through all the weeds and everybody knows Rome primarily as their agricultural heavyweight. And Rome's Bible, if you like, was the Agricultura by Cato the Elder, and also the De Re Rustica by Marcus Tantius Varro. But what they hide is the fact that these are both Latin translations of the Rusty Taco by Mago the Phoenician or Mago the Carthaginian because the first thing Rome did after the sack of Carthage was take his works and translate it so that shows that the agricultural basis was stolen from the Carthaginians which takes me nicely onto uh, Roman shipbuilding. The ships that the Romans used, whether it's the, the Triarene, the Quinquireme, they were direct copies of the Greek and Phoenician ships. They couldn't even be bothered to change the name. They just kept the same names going. Even the merchant ships were direct copies of the ships that the Carthaginians found so easy to sail from... Phoenicia, which is modern day Lebanon, where you've got Tyre, all the way through the pillars of uh, Hercules, as it was then, all the way up to uh, Cornwall in, in England. 
the seaworthiness of these ships was that good that the Romans just adopted them and used them. I'm now going to go on to legionary equipment and go through the equipment the Romans used on a regular basis. And we're going to look at the earliest usage of that equipment. And I'm going to start off by looking at the helmet. And the helmet uh, was simply known as the Galiga, the Gaelic helmet. So there you can see that the helmet the Romans used and modified over the centuries is a direct copy of the helmet which was used by the Gauls. It's not too sure. Uh, it's more likely on the far side of the Alps and made its way over the Alps in time. But um, yeah, the helmet that the Romans used is a direct copy of the Celtic type. Which then leads us down to the shield, or as the Romans called it, the scutum. The early Romans relied on the Greek hoplon, um, which is a round shower shield and they formed a phalanx. But when they come across the Gauls who fought in a more flexible way, they had to find a more flexible way of fighting the Celts. So basically they adopted a type of their tactics. But to do that, the hoplon doesn't give full protection. So they copied the the Greek and Etruscan shields, which was large oval shields, which give protection to one man, because if there's more room between you and the man next door, you need a shield which gives more protection. So by turning sideways on, you could crouch behind the shield easier and more the shield came around the individual, rather than the, the hoplite shield which gives light scales of a fish, and give protection to, to the unit. Now, the main body armour, there was two types. There's the Lorica Hamata, which was chainmail. And even during the Imperial times, the Lorica Hamata, which is what the Exilia wore. And then, of course, you've got the famous Lorica Segmentata, of which was only used for around about 200 years. Where chainmail was invented around about 400 BC. And... The earliest examples are coming in at uh, another Celtic invention, which is chainmail. Uh, there's a chance it might have been invented by the Etruscans, but that's looking more and more remote now. Uh, we know that there are examples on the far side of the Alps from Italy. And so, the consensus seems to be that chainmail was invented by the Celts. Uh, the Lorica Segmentata, or the banded famous Roman armour, that was adopted from uh, the Scythians and the Parthians when they came across them. And that, file of, that style of armour was still used uh, by the Chinese and the Asian uh, civilizations well up to the industrial, estate, the industrial age and the samurais were still practically wearing a style of it uh, evolved a bit over the time but it was still um, La Malarama which was in bands and each band they found out give its own rigidity and strength and it found it easier to flex so it was a good type of armour that was still used as I say the Chinese were still using it in medieval times so when the Romans come across the Parthians and the Scythians they tended to adopt it because they found it was a good way of protection but after about 200 years they phased it out because it was expensive to make and it took a lot of maintenance to keep it in working order. The main spear the Romans relied on was the Hasta and that was just a direct copy of the, the Greek thrusting spear, a leaf blade with a bronze butt spike so it can be embedded from the floor without the, the butt spike going rusty. The Romans kept the Hasta for the Auxilia uh, because it was a cheap to make. Um, they reverted back to it for the legionaries afterwards when they started to take on less infantry based opponents and they started to be based by more cavalry based opponents so they needed something with further reach to enable them to get at their enemy easier. 
the famous Roman sword, the Gladius. Or uh, as it was more popularly known as the Gladius Hispanicensis. Or the Spanish sword. Of which even the Romans at that point had put their hands up and said, well we can't even claim to have invented that one, so we'll just steal the name and we'll just call it the uh, Spanish sword. So that shows that that was invented by Spain. Um, before they reverted back to the Hasta, the uh, the Roman infantry carried uh, a pila or two pilum, and the earliest examples that have been found of them, same again, comes from uh, a long iron javelin that the Spanish used, of which the Etruscans then cut down to a wooden shaft, and found that it was good for a one-hit missile once you're thrown it to someone. The, the the iron head warped and bent so it couldn't be thrown back so the Romans in typical Roman fashion just adopted it and took it over and made it part of their own armour so there you go a quick rundown of the famous things that Rome is known for and well none of it was actually invented by Rome Romans were just good at putting bits of metal into people and killing people and once they'd killed the people and taken over a civilization they basically just stole all the technology and inventions they had from civilizations which although were more advanced technologically or the civilization was more enlightened like the Greeks the Phoenicians the Persians they weren't as warlike but with some civilizations, once they took over, they reverted back to what they knew before. The Romans were just good at, like modern day Japan, taking other people's inventions and finding a way to make them streamlined and reverse engineering them, if you like, and sending them back out and uh, repurposing them. So, there you go. Please feel free to leave any comments of um, what I've said below. As I say, I will try and do videos on some of these things in more depth uh, further down the line. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you found this uh, video entertaining and interesting. If you've got any comments, please feel free to leave them. And I'll leave uh, country comments or reply to them as uh, as i get chance and um, please press the like button and ring that little bell and i look forward to seeing you soon but in the meantime enjoy the rest of your day